right, good morning to you in Facebook land. Uh, if you usually tune in on Instagram, hopefully you jump over here. We will not have Instagram going live today. However, we will post it later. Um, so it just currently will not be live. My name is Sarah Smith and I'm a horticulturalist here at Rogers Gardens. And today I'm gonna talk to you about the plant of the week. Uh, so every Tuesday and Thursday, we do live streams here at Rogers Gardens at nine o'clock. Um, and the Thursday edition uh, usually is hosted by me, Sarah Smith, Tuesday usually see Suzanne. Um, and on Thursdays, I'm usually talking to you about what the current plant of the week is here at Rogers Gardens. Um, if you haven't been in yet or you're not signed up for our emailers, definitely do so. Um, but if you don't know, we are doing a hummingbird summer. Um, so we have tons and tons of beautiful hummingbird attracting plants um, all in our middle garden area. Um, we have tons of absolutely gorgeous hummingbird feeders that just are mind-blowingly pretty, really unusual stuff that you've never seen before. But most importantly, and what you should have first be, uh, beyond everything else, is hummingbird attracting plants. Uh, so this week I am talking to you about Sticky Monkey Flower. Isn't that like the best name ever? <laughs> so Sticky Monkey Flower, um, but catanically um, was called Mimulus. We still call it Mimulus, but um, I botanists have nothing better to do. So sometimes they change names on plants on us. So the new name is Diplicus, uh, but most of us still go by Mimulus. Um, so Sticky Monkey Flower is a California native. Uh, so last week I also did a California native uh, for attracting hummingbirds. So if it's something you're kind of dipping your toe into, this is a really, really great starter plant. Both the Cleveland Sage, which I talked about last week, and the Mimulus Monkey Flower um, are very, very easy California natives. Some California natives can be a little tricky. Uh, these ones are really simple. Um, it's funny, I was uh, doing a little bit of research because I was wondering why they called it monkey flower. Sticky, I understand. If you feel the leaves, they have a little bit of a stickiness to them. Um, but monkey flower... They say the face looks like a monkey. I don't see it. <laughs> so I was kind of looking at it going, maybe a screaming monkey, but I just don't see a monkey face necessarily. Um, they usually come in um, creams and oranges and apricot colors. I have a really beautiful uh, bright orange one here that I picked out of our garden in our display garden. Um, but the hummingbirds love this. So do the butterflies. This is a great um, host plant uh, for some local butterflies. The common buckeye uh, is a really, really pretty one that loves this. Uh, so it's a butterfly host as well. Um, not for monarchs. The monarch monarchs here only to go for the milkweed. But uh, so Mimulus is so, so pretty. Sticky monkey flower comes in different varieties and stuff. This flowers all through. So with a California native, you know, a lot of California natives are kind of, um, a little bit of a flash in the pan. They happen real fast. They're real pretty for a short period of time. And then they're kind of, the nice thing about these uh, is they're not like that. So you get flowers pretty much from winter all the way through spring and summertime, uh, which is really beautiful. Um, I think part of the reason I was checking about the name change, the botanical name change, um, most mimulus need a lot of water. Um, these actually don't. So a lot of things that are still botanically truly mimulus need to be um, consistently moist because they grow near streams and, and, and water sources. This one, however, wants kind of rocky, sandy soil. So this does really well with um, most California natives. I think a lot of people, when they delve into the California native uh, plants, they don't really understand that California is crazy diverse, right? So you can have something that's a desert native. You can have something that's a high mountain uh, native. You can have something that's a low desert, a high desert. There's all different kinds of stuff. So figuring out what you're planting native wise and making sure that their plants actually go well together is very important. So this is one of the easier ones, uh, just like the Cleveland Ice Sage. Doesn't want um, too much water. Uh, once you get it kind of established, you can kind of almost ignore it to a degree. Uh, you can slow down on watering in the summertime, um, but you can give it, you know, supplemental waters during the spring and stuff, but still it will take some water. I have this planted near some of my succulents, so it gets the same amount of water as those do. Um, I sometimes supplement it a little bit, especially if we have an unusually warm winter spring time. Um, I'll give it some supplemental water then, of course. Uh, but it's 
a really, really simple, beautiful flower. It's one of my dad's favorite flowers. So hi, dad, if you're watching. Um, but it's uh, it's really, really easy, really, really pretty. The hummingbirds absolutely love it. Uh, the butterflies love it as well. Uh, so it's a really, really cool, fun one to do. If you've ever come here and checked out our hummingbird um, and butterfly garden, uh, we have a really beautiful apricot colored one in and a little um, orange one still growing there. And you can really just see that it's swarming. The bees like it as well. Uh, so it's something that is attracting all of those beautiful pollinators. Um, and the hummingbirds will go for any color. It doesn't have to just be a certain color. They'll go for all of them. Um, but yeah, sticky monkey flower gets to be about three feet tall overall. Um, and it's kind of a sprawling, it's still an upright. It's still uh, something that has uh, foliage year round. So it's an evergreen, um, but it gets about three feet and kind of travels out a little bit. So where you see ours planted, we have a really beautiful swath of it. Uh, you can really get a good idea of how it grows. Um, so it's nice to see that so you're prepared in your area for the size that it gets. However, it's very easily controllable. So if it's getting too wide for you, it's very easy to pinch it back. Uh, it's very easy to keep the height down. Um, as the flowers kind of finish up and we're just really kind of getting into the full swing of it, especially with these younger ones, you'll see that ours is a little more established and has more. But as the flowers are done, you can deadhead the flowers off just to make it look a little more sightly. Uh, not totally necessary. Uh, you know, these grow all the way from Baja up to um, Oregon and they're mostly along the coastline here and those aren't getting deadheaded and they do absolutely fine so really deadheading with this is only um, for aesthetic reasons really uh, it's not something that's totally necessary but it, however it will help the flower maintain a nice pretty shape as you go along so it's a really great really easy flower um, once it's established you don't have to overwater it uh, and, and really worry about it too much in the summertime um, doesn't have any kind of scent to it but just the color is just so beautiful and that pop of the oranges on the greens just absolutely beautiful and I love this one uh, it has a little bit of a more um, fringy kind of flower to it that's so so pretty and has that same open throat and maybe looks like a monkey I don't know. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, Mimulus, monkey flower, our flower of the week uh, here for the hummingbird summer. So please, if you haven't already gone on and um, checked out uh, our um, mailing list, you'll know know about all the fun things that we have coming up and can be aware of that and when that's going on. And we are also starting our actual in-person uh, seminars for you. So we already had one. Um, the next one is coming up is going to be how to plant and maintain a hummingbird garden. That's going to be me on Saturday, June the 17th. July. J sorry. July. I did this last time. July <laughs> the 17th. <laughs> I don't know what my problem is there. Um, but yeah, it's something we'll be doing live here in person. It'll be at nine o'clock down in the, amp or 9.30, sorry, in the amphitheater. Um, and I'll be showing you all the different really beautiful flowers uh, that we'll have there. Um, we have all kinds of fun surprises and things. Um, the garden is just absolutely buzzing with hummingbirds and butterflies. We have so many butterflies in there. So it's a really great time to come down um, on a Saturday, roll in, sit down, uh, look at all the beautiful flowers. Let me talk to you a little bit about some of my favorite ones and how to maintain a hummingbird garden. I'll be talking about the different types of hummingbirds, how to feed them, um, all that kind of great stuff. Uh, and then you can be here in person. And just while we're sitting there, I guarantee there'll be hummingbirds flying around because they're just absolutely crazy down there at the moment. Um, do we have any questions? Yes, thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Um, can these monkey flowers be grown in pots? Yes, absolutely. Um, the key with these, um, just like with the Cleveland sage and stuff, is make sure you're using the right potting soil. That's really, really important, especially with these. So thinking about where these grow, they grow along the coastline here um, from Baja up to Oregon. So rocky, sandy soil, not stuff that holds too much water. Um, so use cactus mix would be absolutely great with these. Um, if you're putting them in the ground and you know you have a lot of clay soil, um, amending with that cactus mix will definitely help as well to give you that kind of structure that they need uh, and help break that clay up and make it drain a little bit easier uh, and a little bit wider. So just think about where these grow and if you can kind of mimic that, you'll be totally fine. So good cactus mix uh, soil in a pot or a good soil in the ground that doesn't uh, hold too much water is absolutely key for these. And then 
that's it. They're really, really easy. And it's year round. So you'll have something year round. You always have foliage year round. So you don't have to worry about it going dormant. Uh, I think a lot of times people worry about that kind of stuff here in Southern California, but you don't have to worry about that with these. Someone asked about the seminar just yeah it's going to be streamed and yes just say the date again yeah 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 so it's not january <laughs> it is july uh 17th saturday uh 9 30 uh we'll be live here in person in the amphitheater but we will also be doing this live so if you can't make it down you're too far away you're just not a morning person uh you can still tune in and we will live stream that for you and we'll still answer your questions as well so we will have people live in person that'll be addressing you but i'll also be addressing you who are are still uh, doing this as a live stream. Um, we will still post it. Uh, you can still see the one that we did before. Uh, I helped Suzanne out with that and we were talking about um, just the monthly checklist uh, for July, um, just all the different things that you have to do to kind of keep your garden growing. Um, so you can still check that out there as well. So you have all kinds of options, but it's really nice to uh, do this in person. It was so nice to see everybody's smiling faces and kind of get feedback as I was talking. And it was just so great to actually see some of you that have been here with us through this whole entire thing see you in person it was so fun I had so many people come up and and talk to us and tell us how they've been watching and it was just really great to see you in person so I really really was thrilled about that What's the um, price range for the monkey farm? Okay, so usually, sometimes we carry these in four inch, um, and I didn't get a chance to run through the garden and see if we have any in four inch, um, but they're usually pretty small and usually don't have a lot of flower on them. I grabbed these ones because they were the prettiest. Uh, these one gallons, this one's $14.99. Uh, this is the apricot. It's uh, Willet's Apricot Mimulus. Um, just so, so pretty. This one just really was speaking to me this morning. Um, and this one's just called Ivory White, also $14.99. Um, sometimes, occasionally, we will get them in the little four-inch containers as well. So if you want to spot in a couple um, in areas, that's a really great route to go. Um, but in the wine gallons, not a crazy price point. Um, and then we do have a couple of these orange ones, too, uh, that I have in my hat uh, growing in uh, pots and containers as well. But I just grabbed these two because I thought they looked so pretty together, but I couldn't resist putting one in my hat, as always. <laughs> All right. Um, that seems to be all the questions for awesome. today. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. If you um, tune into this later, you can still ask your questions down below. We will answer those questions for you. Um, so, And then we'll be posting this later into Instagram. So in case anybody is just tuning in now from Instagram uh, and realizing that it's not there, hi, sorry. But we will post that later so you can see the beginning of this as well. And you can ask all your questions there as well. Um, also, make sure that you check out our YouTube page. We have a really amazing YouTube page with years and years and years of really amazing content there. So it's really great to go back through there. Uh, even some of the people that you've grown to know here at Rogers Gardens, you can almost see them grow up on camera, which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, you can check out all kinds of amazing stuff there. Make sure you subscribe to that. If you have any friends that are really interested in starting a hummingbird garden or even um, really interested in California natives, make sure you tag them uh, so they can check this out and then they can ask any of their questions as well. So please feel free to share this and uh, make sure you sign up for that email list. That email list tells you about all kinds of amazing things. We are starting to really fully reopen. Uh, we're doing redoing some of our display gardens. So there's a lot of beautiful stuff to see here. We have our milkweed exchange program going on um, with all of our plants and through the summingbird, uh, summingbird, <laughs> the hummingbird summer. Uh, we are donating uh, money to the Sea and Sage Audubon Society. So you can always round up your purchase uh, and the number and we'll match it as well. And the numbers that's getting donated to them is really getting high. I was looking at that list this morning of how much is being contributed to them. They do a lot of really great stuff for conservation uh, for our local areas, uh, especially with California natives and stuff as well. So it's really beautiful to have a native in your plant and watch that little hummingbird come up into an urban area and watch them kind of float around and actually get to drink nectar from something that's truly a native. Uh, it's just a really exciting uh, kind of magical thing. So uh, please come in and say hi. We always appreciate talking to you as well uh, and leave those questions down below and be well and be safe and happy gardening. Thanks so much. Bye.